I got some questions for you. Have you ever experienced pseudo phone loss? You know, when you're looking for your phone just to find out that your phone is in your hand? Well, maybe not, maybe not. But have you experienced scroll finger? Having severe pain from texting or scrolling on social media platforms? Okay, fine. But let me ask you this. Have you ever experienced ghost ringing? Well, that's the experience of having buzzing or ringing taking place in your pocket just to find out that there's no one actually calling you. Oh, I know. Compulsive checking. Constantly opening your social media apps or phone to see if there's new text messages or notifications that have come in in the last two seconds. <laughs> if you've experienced any of these symptoms, I encourage you to continue watching for ways to alleviate your symptoms. All jokes aside, thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about phone addiction. Yes. Good morning. have just tuned into Light Talks and my name is Nakima Light, licensed clinical social worker and I am super excited to be sitting in your living room or your car, wherever you are. So what's the problem and how do we better navigate a relationship with our smartphone? First, of course, let's look at the problem. I've been learning that apps, especially social media platforms, are specifically and intentionally designed in order to consume my attention. Behavioral experts are literally looking for ways to distract and cause addiction because apparently that's where the money is. If one is trying to get your money, they gotta get your time. And if they're trying to get your time, they gotta get your attention. One of the serious truths about this is how does this impact our ability to attend to or pay attention in our relationship with God? I know you're wondering. I've been wondering too, right? Our generation has normalized partial attention or the ability to multitask, which we brag about. <laughs> so as I'm learning about the relationship that I have with my phone, I'm understanding that certain social media platforms, the goal is to be able to get as much of my attention as possible. So. If I know the goal, I have to learn how to navigate or play the game so I don't lose. <laughs> a recent study was able to discern that we touch our phones on average over 2,000 times a day. A day. Yes, a day. <laughs> Do you touch your Bible that much? No shade, because I know I don't. But that was really shocking to me in terms of we might be using it for so many different things now, not just texting or calling or taking pictures, but our banking apps, getting food, getting a ride home. There's so many different myths that are being established to attempt to make our phone a necessity. So of course we have this problem, FOMO, fear of missing out, because we don't want to be ill-informed or have a lack of information about what's taking place, whether it be on social media, whether it be in politics, whether it be in our friends' lives that we possibly haven't seen or spoken to in 10 years. And this fear of missing out is literally shattering our ability to have relationships in the present moment. But I'm gonna talk more about that because another problem is our challenge with needing to be accessible at all times. Now, my question is, is it too much access? There was this cartoon some time ago, I'm possibly aging myself, called Kim Possible, and the song would go, but that's literally the truth. You can call me, you can text me, you can tweet me, you can DM me, you can WhatsApp me, you can, you know, send me a Snapchat. I mean, you can because I don't have Snapchat, but you get the idea. There's so many different ways to gain access to me. And I have to wonder, is that okay? The greatest example to the way to live life, for me personally, is looking at the way of Jesus. And the Son of God walked on the earth and healed the sick, rose the dead, fed those that were hungry, but yet he wasn't always accessible. 
he would oftentimes withdraw to go to a solitary place and to be alone. Yeah, without his iPhone. <laughs> so when I asked the question to myself, do I need to be accessible at all times? The answer is no. And that was pretty hard for me to accept. I would say as a mental health provider, there's always those that are in need. But I've learned that I am not a savior, that I am not the Holy Ghost. And if I'm not accessible, I can be learning to walk in healthy boundaries for my life. Another problem that I have is like the literal addictive qualities of using certain social media apps, right? They're, I call dopamine traps. What do I mean by that? The chemicals that are taking place in our brain when we do certain activities that give us a sense of euphoria or gratification. The same chemicals in our brain that take place when we're exercising or having sex or enjoying something is the same ones that are being targeted for likes and comments on social media. Yeah, a trap. <laughs> So the thing about that is we can be consumed or lose concept of time when we're using these different apps. You know, the ones that are like 15 second videos, but I can be sitting there for three hours with a sum of guilt and unproductivity. <laughs> Guilty? Question mark. So I'm taking an inventory of how and why do I use the apps? Do I use the way that I use my phone and the relationship that I have with my phone. Because like I was saying earlier, there's so many different aspects that we can use our cell phones for now. Like, I don't know, I remember when I had prepaid minutes and free nights and weekends. So there was just limitations and boundaries with how much I can use my phone. And of course, that had its cons to it. But with the advancement of technology, there's also a cost. So I just want us to be mindful to be able to properly prepare and navigate for the things that may be impacting and influencing without us even knowing. So now let's talk some solutions. I mean, you might possibly disregard all the problems that I've said earlier, and honestly, you can choose to stay ignorant to them but i guarantee you that it's impacting and infiltrating and influencing some way somehow and ignorance is not bliss so i'm going to talk about five different ways that have helped me gain a better relationship with my phone i mean my phone's not bad i love my phone i'm literally using my phone to record this video right now but number one phone graves now if you come to my house it is a mandatory rule that we have phone graves during times of fellowship, which means that if we have a group of people over and we might be having a time of fellowship, we collect everyone's phones and they are put away and they are not to be accessed, used, answered until we are leaving or ending the fellowship for the night. Torturous <laughs> for some, but I realized that people have gotten used to it over time and actually look forward to it when they come to our house. And my goal is to be able to protect my relationships and protect my fellowship. The thing is we might be using our phones in social situations to avoid the fact that we feel awkward, avoid the anxiety that we have around new people, or even to just distract ourselves so we don't have to be present and in the moment. But my goal is to be able to have genuine, authentic, and open relationships. So make a phone grave. Number two is parenting my phone. That means that I am the mommy of my phone. <laughs> I put my phone to bed um, and I wake her up in the morning. That means she does not go into the room with me and my husband, neither does his phone. They have beds that are not in our room. Our goal is to protect our relationship and intimacy. If you've seen couples at the mall, at restaurants, I mean, you know, pre-COVID, we can be sitting across from each other scrolling or checking on our phones and not having intimacy or sharing in the moment. 
but it also prevents me from doing the wake up in the morning, yawn, and reach for phone, right? Instead, I put in its place my journal. So when I wake up in the morning, if I'm checking for the phone, it's not there. And the analog alarm clock has returned. Number three is the do not disturb feature. And now we can set this up however we want, but it turns on at a certain time. Ours is 10 p.m. and it doesn't turn off until 7 a.m., which means if we get a text message, a phone call, a notification from social media, that we won't hear it. It will be on silent. And this is to protect our accessibility. We are mindful of we do not need to be accessible at all times. It's about healthy boundaries and understanding that we live lives that give and pour out a lot so that we have to make time to replenish into our lives, into our families, into our relationships. So do not disturb is a lovely feature. Um, and if you set it up, you don't even have to think about it. You just won't hear your phone ring. Number four is screen time limitations. And I'm working on this one, but it's literally setting up in my phone features that help me keep track of how long I've been using certain apps. And then they give me a notification when my app time usage for the day is up. Yes, I have a problem with YouTube, y'all. <laughs> And that way, it gives me the ability to protect the information or the content that I'm digesting over the course of my days, which I think is really important in this high stress and tense environment. We are hearing so much from the news, from social media, which is our new news channel for some reason. And we have to be mindful of taking a break. <laughs> That goes into number five, phone fasts. I love phone fasts because the purpose of this one is to protect my relationship with my phone. So I am saying that I own you, you do not own me. <laughs> Whether it be a phone fast or a social media fast, it's literally the act of going without your phone going without social media for a period of extended time and the time you choose it can be hours it can be days it can be weeks however the lord is leading you but what i realized is that my relationship with my phone has shifted and changed where it's healthier i want to share with you a saying if you can't give something up you don't own it it owns you and it's something that is really motivated my life changes in my relationship with my phone. I am delivered from being addicted to my phone. I definitely have strides in where I want to be compared to where I am. But I encourage you also take an inventory, you know, stand in rebellion to the social media platforms that want our attention so they have our time, so they have our money, right? And make sure that you're continuing to grow in your emotional wellness, spiritual maturity, and relational health. I love you so much. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Channel. Go forth and shine your light.